An alien abduction is when a person believes they have been taken secretly against their will by non-human entities and subject to complex physical and physiological procedures. Most of us probably think of a crazy guy who got drunk and claimed to have been abducted, but there are actually some chilling and compelling stories that could prove other forms of life have visited our planet to gather information on us humans. A very interesting and well-known case is the abduction of Betty and Barney Hill. The couple were driving to their home in New Hampshire after a short vacation in Canada when they noticed a white light in the sky. Shocked at how different this was from a regular star, Barney got out of his car to look at the object through his binoculars. The light got closer and it looked like a pancake-shaped object with windows that revealed occupants. Terrified at what he saw, Barney ran back into the car and travelled home, but something crazy had happened. On their arrival home, they realised they had lost a couple of hours without them realising it. Not thinking too much into it, they went to bed, but in the nights that followed, Betty started having nightmares about aliens and Barney was suffering from severe backache, which he never had before. It got to the point where they both needed help, so they visited a respected psychiatrist in Boston, Massachusetts. He felt they were suffering from anxiety syndrome and put them both under hypnosis. He was convinced that they were abducted by aliens. During the hypnosis sessions, both revealed separately that they were abducted by bald aliens about 5 feet tall with green skin and large heads. They said their skin, nail and hair samples were taken. Betty said they inserted a long needle into a navel, which they said was a pregnancy test, and Barney had to provide a semen specimen. One aspect of the investigation that cannot be explained to this day is that in 1963, Betty Hale drew a very detailed map of a star system that was only discovered later in 1969. She said she was shown this map by the aliens. Astronomers at Ohio State University compared their computer-generated map with the one Betty drew, and both were completely alike. But how could she have drawn this in 1963, when no one even knew what it looked like until 1969? Some skeptics point out the inconsistencies of this story, including the aliens speaking to Betty in English while Barney said they used some sort of telepathy, but now, more than 40 years later, it has never been proved not to be a hoax. The Policeman Abduction Philip Spencer was a policeman in London. He moved to Eichel Moor after leaving his job, and while taking some photographs of the moor, he heard a humming sound and saw a small green creature around four feet tall. The creature moved away quickly, and when Spencer shouted, it turned and waved an arm dismissively, which is when Spencer said he took this photograph. He was shocked and scared, but decided to follow it, and saw a huge silver saucer disappearing into the clouds. He realised the humming sound was from the saucer, and the creature he saw must have been an occupant. After this encounter, he realised that he'd lost more than two hours of his time, and his compass was going haywire. Spencer started having weird dreams and severe anxiety. Like Betty and Barney, he was put through hypnotherapy, and during this state he revealed a fascinating tale of being abducted by an alien. He was taken on board the craft and given a medical examination before being released. One thing that makes the researchers confident that Spencer may not have set up the whole thing was due to the fact that he never wanted publicity or money, and to this day is left haunted with the experiences he faced. The Camping Abduction in 1976, four friends in their early 20s went camping in rural Maine. The first night went well, but on the second night they noticed a very bright light in the sky, much too bright to be a star. They thought it was strange, but didn't think anything more of it. On the third night they decided to try night fishing, whilst in the canoe they noticed the bright light again. One of the men used a flashlight to flash an SOS pattern at the object. The light then expanded and enveloped all four men, and that's the last thing they remember. They woke up back at their campsite with no recollection of what ended up happening with the light or how they got off the canoe. The fire they'd stoked up before they'd left just minutes ago, intending it to still be burning when they returned, was completely burned down to embers. Confused and pretty scared, the four returned back to their normal lives, and the possibility of an alien abduction wasn't even on their minds. Jack Wiener, one of the four, was the first to start having nightmares. In these dreams, he saw beings with long necks and large heads. He saw them examine his arms, while Jim, Chuck and Charlie, the other three, sat on a nearby bench not able to intervene. The beings had large metallic glowing eyes with no lids, and their hands were insect-like with four fingers. The other three men were experiencing very similar dreams, with short mental clips of that night on the lake. In 1988, 12 years after their camping trip, just out of curiosity, Jim Wiener attended a UFO conference hosted by Raymond Fowler, a renowned and highly reputable UFO investigator. Wiener met Fowler afterwards and revealed his strange encounter on the lake. Fowler suggested to Jim that he and the others undergo regressive hypnosis. After the sessions, it was revealed that all four of the men had memories of being abducted and subject to humiliating physical examinations, including the taking of skin and fluid samples. The description of the aliens was consistent. The four men were able to make detailed sketches of the entities, the craft, and the examining instruments. 
Chuck added that the alien's test area was similar to a vet's office with a silvery table. He also related a strange fact. He had much difficulty in focusing on the aliens. When he tried, he could not put an exact image to them. He compared it to trying to tune in a fuzzy radio station. After further examinations, all four of the men were deemed to be mentally stable and they all passed lie detector tests about the event. The abduction of Charles and Calvin. Co-workers Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker were fishing off a pier in Mississippi on an October evening. They began to hear a whirling sound and saw two flashing blue lights. A smallish oval-shaped craft appeared before them from which emerged three pale creatures about five feet tall. Hickson and Parker said the creatures had carrot-like growths emerging from their nose and ears and that in place of hands they had lobster-like claws. Hickson claimed that he was inspected by a mechanical eye while on board the craft while Parker initially stated he did not remember what happened during the event, but in an interview 20 years later, Parker had been able to remember the event and provide a detailed story of his inspection, including telepathic communication with the beings. Upon reporting the incident to the police, Hickson and Parker were questioned. They were then left in a room alone with a hidden tape recorder, which police expected would reveal the incident to be a hoax. Instead, Hickson and Parker could be heard nervously discussing the event. At one point, Parker states, I knew all along there were people from other worlds up there. I knew all along, but I never thought this would happen to me. Now this is an incredible story, because if the man involved was abducted by aliens, to this day he may still be with them. This is the story of aspiring pilot Frederick Valentich. Freddy was on a training flight over Australia's Bass Strait when he radioed Melbourne's air traffic control to advise that he was being shadowed by an unidentified craft flying about a thousand feet above him. Valentich said the craft was orbiting around his own and that it emitted a green light. He told ATC that he was suffering engine problems and when he was asked to describe the object, he said it's not an aircraft. Before the transmission was interrupted by metallic scraping sounds, at that point all contact was lost. A four day, thousand mile search was undertaken, but no trace of Valentich or his craft was ever found. Some believe that Valentich had become disorientated, started flying low and upside down, and spotted his own lights in the reflection of the seawater, but you must argue that there would have been some sort of debris washed up on a beach. People also say his disappearance was staged, but what would be the motive behind staging it? Others believe that his account of the mysterious craft, bolstered by witness reports of a UFO over Australia later that night, is a strong suggestion of an alien abduction. Since he was never found, maybe he was taken away by the aliens and to this day is still with them. I don't know about you, but just thinking about that creeps me out. So that's five cases of believed alien abductions. Thanks for watching and see you in next week's video, five mind blowing facts about space. Feel free to subscribe and share this with anyone you think may enjoy it. Thanks again and see you next week.